uh, for those of you who are still with us. We have the second session on uh, tackling underperformance. And again, I have a star crew here. Um, the Dr. Mataru from St. Mark's, uh, uh, Michael Kaminsky from Warsaw, Professor Ian Gromack from Israel, and Nigel Trudgell, who is a colleague from the West Midlands. Um, now, what we're going to be doing is looking at um, the underperformance of the individual. And I'm going to invite uh, uh, Dr. Mataru to start the proceedings with her talk when I've done the objectives and done the questions, which I just forgot to do. <laughs> so <laughs> understand how to identify and address individual underperformance through assessments and early intervention, learn the criteria for issuing warnings, uh, which we're calling yellow cards. And in this scenario, we're allowed three yellow cards before you're sent off the red card and setting objectives for improvement. Explore strategies for managing persistent underperformance and determining when to issue a red card. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a practical approach to individual underperformance in endoscopy. We've heard a lot about sort of the unit, the department, the culture, the institution, the wider context. Now we're going to drill down a little bit more into the individual aspects. And this is an area that's really close to my heart because it really links with these core themes of safety, quality and excellence. And I think you build upon these. Most of us would aspire for endoscopy excellence, but really this is only possible if it's founded in safety and then high quality. And I think performance links in with these three key areas. Then you go down and you read the report and you realise that the endoscopist looks like they've looked, found a right-sided lesion and they've placed tattoos both above and beyond the polyp and you can see that there's seepage underneath the polyp. So alarm bells start ringing because you think this is a young patient who looks like they possibly had a benign polyp that could have been resected but now has tattoos placed both orally and proximally. And this is one of our senior colleagues in-house. How do we manage that situation? Do you just let it slide? And you say, OK, well, we'll just get the patient in and we'll try and do our best and we'll see what we do. Or do you take the alternative approach of saying, actually, there are some key learnings here that we actually need to be sort of bold about how we embrace feeding that back. The reality in my experience, I'd be keen to hear what the faculty think, is that it's really hard to pick up these low level performance issues to try and drive that improvement. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what performance means in the context of endoscopy. Why does underperformance really matter and how can we maybe think about approaching it? And you'll see an image in the corner of um, the England cycling team, which I think historically were really poor, had won no gold medals. And then they had a new lead. And essentially the story of marginal gains meant that they actually made small little improvements. And we went on to win seven to 10 gold medals consecutively and the high performance was sustained. So this is very doable. So I'll start by a definition. So Performance which persistently falls below a desired minimum standard considered to be acceptable for patient care is, I think, a very practical uh, definition for underperformance. And you can see references to this in good medical practice and JAG have some really good documents relating to this. But of course, performance is multifactorial. 